Hello, dear friends. This is your friend, Pastor Roy Olson, your missionary bishop to Romania and beyond. Don't limit yourself to any time or place because wherever you go, you are God's ambassador. Carry the message that will change a person's life for life and for eternity. Have a thought about sharing the gospel today. I have a mandate to go back to Romania and as Billy Graham just died, I, I sensed an incumbency even before he died to carry on the mantle of this man of God, the pure, clear simplicity of the milk of the gospel without the trappings of a particular denomination or church. Crystal clear, beautiful. And I, I think to myself, can I redo that? We may not be a Billy Graham, but by God, we can share the gospel and even just one person receive it. It's worth it. A thousand times over, I think of the boy who was walking along the seashore and he was chucking it back into the ocean, a starfish that had landed on the beach and was bleaching in the sun. And some man seeing the boy says, hey, you're wasting your time. Those starfish are landing on the beaches all over the world and bleaching in the sun and dying. And what you're doing won't make a difference. And the boy says, as he picked up another starfish and chucked it back into the waves, he said, well, it'll make a difference to that one. Yes, that's the attitude. And so somebody comes to you, and in the course of conversation, friendly, warm conversation, you have an open door to share the gospel. What do you do? Well, there are different ways to open the door. One way is to say, if you would have died, do you know you'd go to heaven? And there, there are three answers, you, you know, and the one is, um, yes, I know. The other is, I'm not sure. And the other is absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, in either direction, you can ask them, may I share with you what I understand to be what you need in order to go to heaven. And, you know, if they say no, let it go. But generally, they say, well, that would be interesting or okay. And, you know, you have to start with where the Bible starts, with John 3.16. And you know it. You've committed to memory, at least. I hope you have. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And you start with the love of God. There are some people that start with the fear and, you know, you're going to go to hell. Don't start there. If God starts with, for God so loved the world, you start with, for God so loved the world and you in particular. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Then you ask him, what is the name of the only begotten Son of God? They probably will know. If they don't, you tell them. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. You read about him in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But uh, yes, Jesus. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, his name is Jesus. That what? That whoever believes in him, then you ask them, I said, do you believe in Jesus Christ? They may, they may not believe in Jesus Christ. But you, you go from where they are. If they don't believe in Jesus Christ, you tell them reasons to believe in Jesus Christ. But uh, let's not go down that trail right now. Uh, let's go and continue. And uh, they, whoever believes in Jesus Christ, and if they say, yeah, I, I, I believe that he existed. Uh, then, then you say, well, do you believe that he's God the Son? Do you believe that he came to earth? Do you believe that he died 
on the cross? Do you believe that he died for the sins of the world? Now, if they have any church background, they probably won't say yes to all of the above. Then you tell them, I says, I guess then you're a believer because you believe everything the Bible says about Jesus Christ. Then you tell them. You say, well, whoever believes in him, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, two things happen. Two. Number one, whoever believes in him will not perish. As you ask him, I said, if you are believing Jesus Christ according to John 3.16, what will not happen to you? Will not perish. Why? Because you give a lot of money to the church? Your good outweighs your bad. Or because you're a believer in Jesus Christ? Well, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. And then number two is whoever believes in him, number one, will not perish, and number two, but have everlasting life. What does a believer in Jesus Christ, according to this verse, have? Well, it's written right there, everlasting life. <clears throat> oh, Roy, it's too simple. Give me a break. It's supposed to be simple, magnificently simple, so simple that even sinners can get it. Well, what about teaching them to be good? Leave that to God. The principle of a good fisherman is you get him into the boat first. Then you clean him up. And the job of the church is to disciple people. The job of us is to evangelize. You can't disciple somebody unless they're a believer. And we are in the business of evangelism, of making believers, and then sending them on. Or, or if we're a call to do that, then disciple them. And uh, the magnificent simplicity of the gospel, simply through John 3.16. There are other ways as well. But, uh, dear friends, if what we believe is true, and it is, that uh, whoever has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ has everlasting life and will not perish, according to John 3.16, then the corollary is as well true, that every person who does not have a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ lacks a Savior. They die without the forgiveness of God. That's according to my understanding of Scripture. Well, it's my thought for today. Let's get him in the boat. Let's get him in the boat. Well, you say, I tried and it didn't work. Well, the Wright brothers could have said, I tried to make an airplane, but it didn't fly very well. Bucket of bolts and scotch tape and cloth and wire. Well, they made a beginning, and now we got 747s. You make a beginning. Keep at it. Keep at it. Grow in your effectiveness. And God bless you richly. Dear friends, I see you watching. I have a list on my computer. Uh, Dawn, Hauk, uh, Chippy, uh, Andre, uh, Maria, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Adi. Hi, Pache, Adi. Hello. And, and so on. Well, let's get at it. Okay? We're returning to Romania in less than a month. And that's what we're going to do. And... Uh, if, if you want help, we're going to do some conferences. And we're going to do conferences in training personal evangelism. I've been a pastor uh, uh, all my adult life in one form or another. Uh, now as a missionary, not as a pastor of a church. But I want to tell you that I have won more people for the kingdom of God when I spoke to them personally, rather than I preached an eloquent sermon and they, they accepted Jesus Christ while I was preaching, it hasn't happened that way. My preaching had some motivational effect, I hope, but it's grounding their faith in the word of God. 
doesn't matter whether they feel it or not. It does matter. But I mean, that's not the issue. The issue is if they believe in Jesus Christ, what do they have? Tell them what they have. Because you have the authority of the scripture behind you. Well, thanks so much. Love you all. Let's have a good time together with this magnificent gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we'll have some sheaves to lay at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ when we see him face to face. Love you. Thanks for tuning in. And guess what? I'll be back. Bye.